Since we're scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons or a It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sapphire Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today we have Michael. Hello. We have Stuart. Good morning. We have somebody eating something. Or possibly typing. I don't know who that is. That would was, be... was me opening a necklace that I got my girlfriend. Aww. And, it's, and you guys will like this. You guys will like this. Actually, it's related. It's it's a Star Wars necklace. One piece says, "I love you." The other piece says, "I know." <laughs> Me and Joe do that to each other all the time. Mm. Yeah, Aww. and it has it has the rebel faction, the rebels uh, insignia. Oh, young love, so cute. I'm glad she's not watching this. <laughs> well, we do have three listeners, one from the United States. So. Oh crap. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, we also have Scarecrow. Yeah, man. <laughs> the Some always enthusiastic morning I've ever heard. Uh, yeah, I was just to say, oh, Ed, he's as enthusiastic as ever. <laughs> I'm normally more enthusiastic than this. I just supernova wiped, wiped us. We oh know. yeah, supernova, supernova left wiped me us, wrecked. and then I had to close last night. So, and then we have Eugene. Hello. And Amy in the chat room. Because she doesn't want to join us on the call, so no, 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 no. Why doesn't she want to join us? I don't know. She, we, uh, we, what did you guys do to her last time? We tried to add her, and it just it, it wasn't a thing, so we just sort of gave up. She can jump in whenever she wants to. Um, anyway, so first up on the ticket, we have the Supernova wrap up because I like to do things out of order of the title because that's more fun. So, for those who don't know, Supernova is a sci-fi convention similar to Comic-Con that happens in Brisbane and on the Gold Coast and Sydney and a few other places. But Brisbane and Gold Coast are the only two we go to because that's the ones that are local to us. Last weekend was the Brisbane one. And Amy says Skype hates her, so she won't be joining us. Sad face. Anyway... So we had crazy amount of fun. I manned Garrison Seven store. Um, Stuart, speaking of which, can you jump on Facebook and check the Garrison Seven Facebook page for me? Uh, sure. What do you want me to actually look? Um, you'll see it if it's there. If just if there's a post there that's not one of ours, you'll know it if you see it. Um, they're posting something, and I'm not allowed to really say much beyond they're posting something until it's actually Don't posted. Don't see anything yet. Okay, cool. So Scott is. Running late, probably fell asleep again. Um, he got. You think you're tired? Scott was wrecked. He was up until oh, you, one in the morning on one or two in the morning on Saturday. No, it was one thirty in the morning when he dropped one of the ladies in at the C- CBD of Brisbane. He lives on the Gold Coast. We had to drive home, so he wouldn't have got home until two thirty. So, yeah, um, poor guy. And then he was running a tiny little bit late getting back on Sunday. <laughs> Anyway, I, I'm back, back, back to the topic. I was man in the gar- helping out at the Garrison 7 page. All of the photos, you can find them up on Facebook. I'm going to go through them, retouch them, sort them out, make them look pretty, and put them put them up in a new folder, which is sort of a, a better-looking folder, um, so that people can find themselves more easily. I just did a photo dump up um, just to get them up sort of faster. Anyway. Um, you've, also got, you've also got my perspective on Supernova. Yeah, you... Of a retail of a person working in a retail shop who was actually at the store for more than two minutes. <laughs> so hey, I stayed at Garrison Seven for most of Sunday until two o'clock when my camera was full. You yeah, on Sunday. If anyone was actually looking for you on the other dates? Yeah. There was a few people apparently came past the Garrison Seven thing looking for me for the free posters I was giving out. So a lot of people came past looking for you just to have a chat and say good day as well. Yeah. And when they couldn't find you, they came to me. <laughs> it's only because I told them, if you, if I'm not here, go check out the 105th. 
Yeah, it's Flat. nice that you guys get all the attention over there. Mm. Here, in, you know, here in Maryland, if I go to a convention, nobody knows who the heck I am. Mm. Eh. Hey, we like a parasite. We le- we latch onto other groups and pretend to be part of them. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> I latched onto Garrison Seven. Michael latched onto Nobility. Scarecrow latched onto the One Hundred Fifth. It's it all works. Actually, I'm a founding member of that group, so. Latched on, founding manda, uh, member, fine line between the two. <laughs> anyway, same difference. So anyway, so, oh man, that was an intense couple of days. Um, got my photo with Summer Glau. Summer Glau. Ugh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. yeah. I would say, this is the first supernova I didn't actually get any photos with. I'm surprised you didn't get a photo with Chewy. I already got a p- photo with Peter, but I did go, go talk to him and stuff. Okay, cool. So the, I know the 105th had a promo photo out the front with him. Sorry, the 501st had a promo photo. I always get them backwards. Shut up. Yeah. Um, yeah they it was like, wait, Saturday. what? We had a promo photo with Chewy. When was this? Mm. Yeah, no, they had it on the on the Saturday. The day you weren't in Jedi gear. Yeah. Yeah. So and we went down and harassed them with the Garrison Seven guys. Got some photos. It wasn't on. No, it was Sunday that they did it. Was it? Son of a bitch! I'm gonna go kill him. No, it was Sunday they did the photo. You were in the Jedi gear on Saturday, weren't you? No, no, I was in Jedi gear Sunday. I'm gonna go. He kill was him. in. Yeah, it was, was, so, it was Sunday morning Saturday. at like quarter past ten. I know because I was men in the Garrison Seven um, thing when I we. I don't think we I was. It. Yeah, no, I didn't actually get to know until ten thirty. I slept in. So yeah, you douche. So you slept through it. So it's your fault. Yeah, okay, that's my fault. Yeah. Still, God told me. Yeah. So well, I assumed you knew. Um. Mm. Anyway, anyway. Then for him to actually get out of bed early. Yeah. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, like, it... Like, I loved it. We actually went to... Um, what was her name? The chick from... What's it called? Bloody hell, wow. Talk about a mental blank on mental blank. Adventure Time. The, the one that was there from Adventure Time saw the Save Sci-Fi Ultimate fan fleet um, image. Thought it was the greatest thing in the world and demanded that she had one. So I went back to the Garrison 7 guys and got her one of each. So she's got a hero <laughs> nice. one, an enemy one, and a war one. And she's like, this is going up on my sort of wall of spectacularly awesomeness. I'm like, that's awesome! Um, nice. So yeah. Um, Chris Judge okay. swung past the Garrison 7 display. Um, had his photo taken in the booth. Something that we technically can't release. But Scott is like... <laughs> All over it. It's absolutely hilarious. I think the better question is, why was he wearing a kilt? Yeah! I don't know! It's Christopher Judge. Are you really surprised <laughs> he decided to wear a kilt? Don't question well, it was, him. It wasn't just Christopher Judge. It was a couple other people I saw wandering around in kilts as well. So I don't know what the hell to go with that was. Probably following Chris's lead. Probably. Besides, this is the guy who thought it was great to get in a fart wall with... Um, Jason Momoa. Richard D- with Richard Dean Anderson on the set of Stargate to the point they locked him in a freaking space suit. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> yeah. There is no way to apply logic to this. That's a fair point. At all. That's an incredibly fair point. Um, but yeah, he's, he was absolutely spectacular. Floated around the Garrison 7 display for a little bit. Got some photos taken there and then wandered off to... Um, wandered off round, had a look at different things. I don't know if you've made it over the uh, 105th or not. I I did send him in that direction. Uh, no, we didn't see him. Oh, sad face. Did you hear who... If he did, he probably would have bought the remainder, remainder of our stock. Yeah. Did you see who turned up on Friday and was wandering around? Um... He, he, was, on, he was just there as a... He wasn't there as a celebrity. He was there just as a random... Supernova person just wandering through, looking at all the different things. Who? You, you won't believe who it was. Not in a million years. Just spit it out before I kick you. Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry was at Supernova after doing a keynote just down the convention center from us. And saw all the guys in gear. So he came down, he bought a ticket and wandered around the place. Who is this? Stephen Fry from Q, from QI. He's like... Okay. QI? What is QI? That's a British TV show. I'm. Doesn't surprise me that... A very advanced, mm-hmm. very intelligent British TV show. And I'm 
Not surprised that <laughs> Americans don't know it. <laughs> wow. And he just shows up <laughs> randomly, wow. walks through Supernova, and no one even knows he's there. Yeah, exactly. Um, wow. I, I found out sort of just after he disappeared... Because he sort of wandered through, and he apparently came past the Garrison 7 stuff, had a bit of a chat, and wandered on down towards the photo booths. I got back to Garrison 7 about two minutes after he was there, and I went looking for him. I couldn't find him. And I was like, no, I want a photo with Stephen Fry, damn it! <laughs> so, yeah. That uh, would... I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's Stephen Fry. It's a good thing. What's next? We'll get Peter Capaldi doing the same thing? Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Did you guys see the? <laughs> okay, uh, he would. He wouldn't the... stand a chance. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, he would. He's not. Pro he's not the most liked doctor. And on top of that, he's a crotchety old Scotsman. No one's going he's to really give an amazing given... doctor. I know. Yeah, yeah but he's, even he's as a crotchety, crotch he's, he's a crotchety old Scot. He's not going to be. Um, how do we put it? Uh, he's going to blend in. I mean, yeah. honestly, if Peter Capaldi shows up dressed up as dressed up as Doctor Who, everyone's just going to take a look at him going. Wow, that is a fantastic Doctor Cosplay. Yeah, Except if that's he a walks past the higher TARDIS guys. Yeah, the higher TARDIS guys are just gonna be like. <laughs> the higher TARDIS guys are gonna be like, huh? Did you see? Nah, did you guys see no the, uh, way. The P Peter Capaldi video with Peter Jackson. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm gonna bring that up in the news. Fantastic. I'm gonna bring that up in the news because it actually leads oh. into a story. Okay, cool. We'll bring. We'll Sorry. talk about that in a minute. Okay, so Supernova. This Supernova, out of ten. What would we rate it? Just because I like rating things randomly. It felt different. Yeah, it... It was busy, but it wasn't Gold Coast busy. But it was still pretty hectic. And that storm on Sunday night was pretty funny. <laughs> I got caught in that on the way home. You did? Sad face. To be fair, I'm glad I have a hood on my robe. <laughs> <laughs> that helped. Uh, so... Well, see, I was actually getting ready to head off, and I looked at Bomb, and I saw it coming. I went, no, I'm just going to stay here. Went, <laughs> went to wander across the subway. They're like, oh, yeah, we're closing in five minutes. We don't have any bread. And it's like the only food place nearby. I'm like, well, shit. And then I went, oh, that's right. There's an IGA just up the road. I wonder what they've got cleaned out. Yeah. What's an IGA? Uh, IGA is a little food shop. Uh, independent grocers of Australia. So think of it sort of like a slightly larger version of a corner store. Okay. Um... And totally get it. Yeah, and they they've been totally cleaned out. Half their shelves were empty. The half that was left was not stuff you want to eat. <laughs> but there was a chocolate cake, and I went, "Eh, fine." There's literally nothing else here that looks remotely close to edible, except for fruit and veggies. And who wants to eat fruit and veggies? So I just like, "Yeah, fuck it, chocolate cake it is." Um, and then we, me and my mate, were walking back to the convention center, and we got about halfway there, and that's when the second storm front hit. And we got back to the convention center. Well, I was relatively wet. He was not so wet because he was using me as a windshield because I'm a giant yeah. fat ass and he is Jesus and he is tiny. So he just sort of hid behind, hid sort of downwind from me and was almost perfectly dry, the little bastard. Um, <laughs> and then we disappeared into the convention center, sat around in there eating cake for like an hour until the storm passed. And then I drove home. Well, you want my view on Nova? Yep. Out of ten, sort of thing. Yep. I'll give it a three this time. A three. Oh. Yeah. That's harsh. I... Okay, put it this way. I felt like doing a different sort of costume than I normally do on the Sunday. He did Goku. That was hilarious. That was not what I wanted to do in the first place, though. I had two hundred plus dollars set aside on Friday to go buy a new costume for Sunday. Yeah. What was the one thing they did not have there that, except for in tack gear? People selling costumes. Yeah, that's actually a good point now that you mention it. Hmm. Retail yeah, was weapons. down across the board. I mean, some of the places in Artist Alley barely covered cost. Yeah. And these are people that normally do... Quite well. Like, one guy that my mate was working for, he did eight hundred and eighty odd dollars. Normally, he does three grand. Yeah. Ooh. The the place the arrangement of the place was poorly done. The floor area for exhibitors was all over the place and shorter than it should have been. Yeah. 
There was well, huge there was, there was... furor over the imagine his playground on the Saturday and Sunday about them not allowing model kits because about thirty people brought in really high level kits in for the competition, only to be told, "No, nah, you'll have to take them home. You, there's no models." Yeah, it's just that they was a bit of a cluster. Fucked. Wait, there's no competition. So badly. Yeah. They basically said if you, if you're not entering art, you can't enter it. Huh. Well, if I'd known that we could enter art, I would have entered my posters. Okay. <laughs> My dude, they're photoshopped, not hand drawn, so. Yeah, it would have been. They're awesome, that anyway. No. But basically, they. I could put a filter just... over it to make it look hand drawn. I mean, even Zomster went in. Yeah, Zomster got pretty smashed. Um... They had hardly anything, though. Yeah. They, they brought pretty much all their figurines and t shirts and stuff, they had nothing in model kit. Normally they have an entire wall, ent- entire side of their thing. This time their entire side for the model kits was three pages of them, three little pages. Yeah. It didn't really count. So when it came to model kits, they most people wound up buying from us at the 105th. So we actually did, were one of the better ones, better performing people there. Yeah, it has it nothing to do with me crap. spending the better part of a grand there. Uh, Dave, we went in there with eight, with about a hundred Zoid kits. We left with twelve. Yeah, that's not the point. I still bought a dozen of the damn things. You bought six. You don't even rate a chunk. Yeah. Well, let's see. We sold out of X Wings got... in the first twenty minutes. Actually, I bought yeah. eight <laughs> I was saying, total. Anything Star Wars where I probably will have sold very quickly. Yeah. Not really, actually, we took about two thirds of the Star Wars stuff home. We just the only things we sold out of was the ties. The R2 units, the X-Wings, and I think the Stormtrooper. Fair enough. Basically anything that's in the new movie. <laughs> Basically all the stuff we've seen in the new movie so far. Yeah. Speaking of we which, did you see the, the dude wings. in um, the new uniform for the, the new Star yeah. Wars? Yeah, the new Stormtrooper. Yeah. That was cool. That was really I well just, I also um, noticed when I was walking around, because I was doing a lot of cosplay stuff, I noticed someone did a Finn cosplay, and it looked really awesome. Like, you had the jacket yeah. and everything. We, we, got, we got her photo in the um, the box a couple of times. Uh, that's Ray. That's Finn's, Ray. Finn's the Black Jedi. The Black Jedi. Yep. Uh, uh, there's too many names. Why are they names? Why get, names? Get a grip. That's it. I, I'm throwing myself out the airlock. Later, bitches. <coughs> Peace. He should have had a coffee before he came on this morning. Hey, you sound if, like you could use one. Hey, if I have coffee, I'm like the squirrel off over the hedge. You won't understand me anyway. It'll just be... Yeah, but it'd be funny. <laughs> one thing I, uh, I'll admit I, ha- I, and I found really stupid was the placement of the um, um, anime theatre. Like, where you go and watch anime. Yeah. It was nowhere near anything. Like it was literally halfway over the other over the other side of the building. Yeah, you had to go all the way to the other end and then upstairs, and that's where, um, just like right to the very top floor. So there's three stories on yeah, at that end like, of the building. Why? All the way to the top just to get to Film Inc. Studio, and then the anime studio was even further. You had to keep going off and around to the side. Really that's actually the room where I met uh, Richard Dawkins and James Randi, so... Just throwing that out there. Yeah, everything just seems oddly placed. I don't know if it's if it was booking pro- problems or something, but everything just seemed oddly placed. Yeah, and hopefully they'll have that sorted for next time. Um, anyway, I will give it six out of ten. No, no, no. I'm gonna seven out of ten. And the reason I give it such a high rating is because Garrison Seven wasn't meant to be there. Until like a week before it actually happened, it might have been one of the reasons the the shop layout was so all over the place. Is because Garrison Seven sort of wedged itself in at the eleventh hour, and he was really, 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 really accommodating to Garrison Seven and to to me as well. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to sort of say I'll definitely rate it higher because of that. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed it, and I'm definitely going to the next one. I don't care what these naysayers say. I am going to be there. Rain, hail, or shine. Preferably while my car's undercover for the first two. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
Well, there was that other thing that Stephen Fry did on the Friday, which would have taken up some pretty important space. So. Anyway, anyway, moving right along. Let's move on to the Captain America trailer. Oh, did that, drop, did that break the internet last week? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Captain, the Captain America Civil War trailer dropped and had almost every character we know is going to be in it yeah, the shown two, on screen. Yeah, the only two Except we haven't Spider-Man. seen was Spider and, Spidey and um, Vision. Yeah, exactly. We're the only two that were sort of conspicuously absent. Vision, because they probably haven't done the CG for him yet. That's oh, understandable. And- Spidey did film, and um, Tom did film his scenes a lot later because they had to do a, get a whole new Spider-Man for everything and stuff. Yeah, so. exactly. And we don't know what exactly his role is going to be. Exactly, and I, I think they're going to want to keep David Spider-Man under the wraps. The new Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Didn't that piss people off? That was I see. I actually knew Man, about that was Japanese funny. Spider-Man. I found that hilarious. I, I, people were so annoyed. Uh, I've known about that for years. Oh yeah, so have I. That's not the first time I've even seen that shot. But I was like, you know what? The, the trailer dropped. Oh, please tell me someone spliced that into the trailer. <laughs> I saw something about a, a version of with Spider-Man added, and I had, I was like, I'm not gonna look at this. It's <laughs> probably David. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, that was pretty funny, but oh damn! So, um, yeah, okay, Stuart, it's your now's your time to shine, Mister Stuart. Yep. So yeah, break this... the trailer down. You have ten minutes, tops. Oh jeez. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. So opening scene. Um, it oh, it uh, it looked like the scene from Ant Man, but the um the the words were different. It was like, extended. What... Yeah. So it sort of so, put that um, scene in context. With Bucky's um, still jammed in something. Yeah. It looks like he's trying to remove it or something. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. But um, basically, um, Cap and Falcon are there and tracking him down and saying the people are coming after you and they're trying to save him. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to get the trailer up so I can do it play by play. <laughs> Cause there's so there's so much in this trailer to cover. Oh yeah. Uh, man, and the day this thing dropped, <coughs> I watched it like six times. Oh yeah. I just watched it again and again and again. And every five minutes, somebody else I knew tagged me in it. I'm like, I've already seen it. It's on my <laughs> wall. I posted it like two hours ago. Why are people still tagging me? I'm gonna oh. watch it anyway. Yeah, and then um, they have the general from the um, Incredible Hulk movies, which oh, I think is a really cool tie Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, it's nice to see him. Um, he's hit, um, Probably hit. the easiest way to tie Hulk into this one. Yeah. Yeah, without having Hulk in it. Exactly. And so he's uh, he gives Cap the, um, the proposed uh, superhero amendment thing where they have to all sign up and their powers and stuff. Yeah, um, and that was a f- it's actually named after the Age of Ultron incident, the Sokovia... Something or other. To yeah. Do with the city that got picked up by Ultron and casually dropped. Because yeah. that's not terrifying at all. And then it cuts to um a scene where Bucky's on a motorcycle, running probably running away from the guys that were chasing him, and Cap's still trying to get him back. And yeah. Widow sa- and Black Widow saying, "Don't do it." And Cap's like, "What? You're gonna arrest me?" Yeah. That's a pretty badass moment. Yeah. Uh, then it leads um, into um, Cap um, in his gears, surrounded by soldiers, and he puts his shield on his back. So I think the I th- either think those sol- soldiers are with the army, or they're the guys that are chasing Bucky. Yeah. And then we cut to where it really starts to get feelsy. Iron Man cranking open a door, or just. Whoosh, Cranking open a door looks awesome. Elevator door at that. Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, Cap, you look nervous. He's like, Well, it's been a long day. So I don't know if that's going to be at the start of the movie or the end of the movie. It might be because it, it does look like that garage. Um, it looks like that run down garage. Yeah. That seat that they found Bucky in. So I got a sneaking suspicion based on this trailer. What happens is. Crossbone sets off a massive explosion that kill, kills heaps of people, but does it in such a way that they blame Bucky. 
Captain um, Cap tries to defend Bucky, everyone else not so much, and eventually the team is split in half. Mm. Oh yeah, did you notice apparently in the... Do you know how they changed the Marvel sort of comic book pages that they flick through each time to represent what's going to be in the movie? Yeah, I did notice. Did you notice who they had in that? Miss Marvel. Well, yeah. Well, there is going to be a Miss Marvel movie eventually. Yeah. So, it'd be interesting to see if she might make an appearance. They haven't cast her yet. So, yeah, okay, if as she... far as we know, they haven't cast her yet. They will announce if there was a Miss Marvel. Hey, they kept who was going to be Spider-Man under wraps for ages. Would it not surprise you if they put a cameo yeah. of Miss Marvel in? I mean, no, they didn't. They... Got the they made the deal for Spider Man and then released who was gonna be playing it shortly after. No, it's like a month and a half, two months. Okay, that's not that long. Yeah, well, it's quite a while when there's rumors flying around it's every not, other day. It's not like an Abrams, okay? Yeah, that's a fair point. It's not. It's not. It's not Abrams level sort of, sort of hiding it, <laughs> hiding yeah. Luke Skywalker for the entire time while the trailers have dropped. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of which, speaking of which, guess what? What? 14 days. Until you guys get it or until we get it? Until I get it. So 15 days till we get it. Yep. And yeah, we are bringing you in. Here, man. We are bringing you into that podcast, Michael. You don't have a say in the matter. We're going to ruin the movie for you. No! David, you can't do that to me. I don't have opening day tickets. And <laughs> believe it or not, believe it or not, my girlfriend seems to think that um, see, like, can't, you know, I was talking to me a couple days ago, I was like, oh, you know, so are we going to go see it on the 18th? Like, you know, are you going to go buy tickets for it? I'm just like... It's sold out everywhere. Or, it's, you, you really think it's going to, it's, it's sold out immediately. She's like, no, not the, not the midnight premiere. Later that day, I'm like, honey, it's going to be sold out for weeks. Yeah, it's, we'll put it this way. Over here, Brisbane is sold out in every cinema that's pre-selling tickets. For like the first week, almost every yeah. showing. I mean, we probably have more theaters over here total, and but um, like per per area. Considering two it, of the cinemas have doubled up and one of them has tripled up on opening night, um, how many cinemas they're actually going to be screening it at at the same time, and they're still sold out. I don't really know about that. <laughs> I mean, I've got four, five theaters within twenty five minutes of me. Well, put it this way, theatres in New Zealand, which who get it two hours before us, are booked out for the midnight screenings, and they're running it in every cinema they have in Auckland. Every screen on every cinema is going to be playing it, and it's sold out because people are flying into Auckland just to do a midnight screening, because it's one of the first places in the world to see it. Let that one sink in for you. That's... Pretty insane, man. Yeah. Let's pay two grand so I can watch a movie a day earlier. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> two grand's just the plane tickets. So, anyway, 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 anyway. We're, we're slightly off topic. Captain yeah, America I, trailer. Yeah. Amy, uh, you're not here to stop us from rambling incoherently off topic. I blame you for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, cut, uh, cut along and then, um,. Uh, Bucky's getting a gun out of a sliding arsenal, and this is where Cap stomach, and this is where the Cap says, "I disagree with everything that's going on." And then probably comes my favorite line in the entire trailer from from Robert Downey Jr. I just want to punch you in your perfect little teeth. Yeah, I love that line. Oh yeah, that was a good line. And then all the action starts. Oh yeah. And then you start to see the divide. Oh yeah. And all of the the different pieces falling into place. Yeah, so um, yeah. it looks like for Cap's team, it's Cap, Bucky, Hawkeye, um, Scarlet Witch, which is, that's what we know so far. We also see uh, Panther, but we don't know whose side he's on, but you do see him outpacing oh, Captain yeah, America. He, he's just, it's like, what the hell? He's just out sprinting, he's just like... Pfft. It's like, it's like fucking about. Not catch me! Ah, <laughs> and Black Panther. I'm also gonna make it racist. Uh, it's like fucking yeah. about. Go on like a missile. Um, yeah, which is pretty awesome. You see War Machine laying on the ground with what appears to be his arc reactor ripped out. He looks dead. 
Yeah, he looks. He does look dead. He looks like in he a really looks bad looks way. Like he's and Stark dead. looks really upset too. So. Well, he is his best friend. So. Yeah. No, I'm saying I'm. I'm guessing that means he's dead. So. He's either he's either dead or severely injured. Yeah. Like at, at, at the very alive. least, he's knocked out of the contest. Yeah. So. Um... And then we um cut to Bucky finding um uh Tony in the Iron Man suit and he's and he's ripping out that arc reactor. Yeah. And then probably comes the most feelsy line in the whole trailer, where Cap, where Cap says, "I'm sorry, Tony. No, normally I wouldn't, but he's my friend." And Tony's response is, "So was I." <laughs> Whoa, that's yes. speaks, that line speaks volumes. Yeah. So. And then and then it just turns to Bucky and Cap just wailing on Tony. Oh yeah. Which leads, which it leads me to think they probably that it might kill off Iron Man instead of Captain America in this. Yeah, I don't think they will. I, mean, I don't they, think either of them are going to be killed off. Aren't they both signed up for Infinity War? I was about to say for Infinity War, um, in the in what's his face's vision of the future, you do see, you don't see um, Iron Man explicitly, but you do see the armor, and you don't see Captain America's face. But you do see the shield. Now, it could be that they kill off Cap and is replaced by Bucky. Well, that's what happens in the comics. Yeah. Or they could be that they kill off Bucky. Let me look up the IMDB for the um, Infinity Wars. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure that they're both cast for that movie. Flashbacks. So I'm going to say it's flashbacks. flashbacks Spoilers! Yeah, both. I feel like in order to really mesh the Guardians into the Avengers at some point in those movies, they'd have to have Robert Downey Jr. Otherwise, no, nobody um, else would There's no them. confirmed actors from Infinity War yet, so can't say if they're both there. Yeah. There's nothing well, I'm pretty the sure that Robert Downey Jr. is uh, confirmed that he is um, he is contracted for another se- another few movies, right? Yeah. I think so, but that was a couple of movies ago, so... Yeah, maybe. So, yeah. Anyway, um, moving right along, tra- if you haven't seen that trailer... Go watch you it. You have my permission to stop listening to the podcast this second, as long as you guarantee that you'll come back to it, and go and watch it two, three, four, five, six times. What did we miss? Probably lots, we only skimmed over it. Um, tell us in the, the comment section, why not? Um, so... But Next. also, uh, I do want to mention how different of a trailer this is co- compared to Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's got a totally different feel to it. It's a totally different trailer. This made me more excited to and want to watch the movie. If I had a TARDIS, I'd be going forward to when this movie comes out just to get it. <laughs> um, more than the Star Wars trailer did. And the Star Wars trailer was sort of right up there. So, because... David, I'm... there's still opening night tickets for Star Wars in... In my area. Uh, t- <laughs> why the fuck are you not getting them? Yes. I am about to. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. It's just okay, I'm so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> on, on behalf of your girlfriend, get the fucking tickets. IMAX 3D too. I mean, awesome. Oh, motherfucker. I wish I could watch IMAX. Yeah, we, we have a IMAX screen in Brisbane. And it was the <laughs> first thing sold out. Gotta move to the US, man. Or come, come visit me. I'll get you tickets for this. I'll pay for your tickets. Don't worry. Oh, oh you, you pay, we get it before you. You, you, hear, you hear that, Stuart? He said he'd pay for our tickets to get over there. For, for the movie tickets. The movie tickets. <laughs> Let me clarify it. quickly. For the right price, I, I either heard or didn't hear him say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway. Oh, yeah, that, 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 um, that trailer actually really hyped me up as well. Oh, yeah. So, and it got the, the views on that ticked up. I think it'd be up there with the Star Wars trailer for the amount of views in the period it of time. Actually broke the record. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. The like, 20, uh, let me because there was yeah there was a yeah in twenty four hours the in the, in the first twenty four hours the, the Civil War trailer racked up sixty one million views. Holy crap! Wow, that's impressive. But yeah, um, which one has more views right now? Probably Star Wars, but it was released months ago. Like a month or so ago. Whatever the yeah, yeah, the Force Awakens called. trailer was released uh, um, last month um, in the first 24 hours. It was viewed 112 million times. So, 
Oh my god. So. Yeah. It's it's still Star Wars is still nearly double that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, d- definitely, definitely looking forward to Captain America. Oh. And we are so going to cover it every time there's a new trailer. Star Wars trailers, on the other hand, there's been another one of those dropped, and God damn it, I'm just. <laughs> yeah, I am. Said they I've... were done releasing trailers, and there's been like 18 new ones. <laughs> yeah, I am now at the point where I'm avoiding Star Wars trailers. For the movie. Why? Because I don't want to get too much more excited or I'll fucking explode. You'll just hear, woohoo, and you'll see a guy flying off into the air and that'll be me. <laughs> Team Rocket blasting off at the speed and of light. I regret nothing! <laughs> <laughs> There's a showing at 2am. Uh, so, anyway. Yeah, I've, got, I've got my night session. So, yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's move on and throw the microphone over to Eugene. All right. Um, for today, we'll cover round two and their one one thousandth Star War or Star Trek line. Round two, who has been repopping. Sorry, sorry, a sorry lot of- Eugene. Really, really quickly, yeah. I just remembered something that happened at um, Supernova. I had to throw out there. And Stuart and Scarecrow and everyone here will find this hilarious. When the Garrison 7 guys went down to get their photos taken with the Stormtroopers, one of the people there, just a random fan, followed them back to get the Garrison 7 display and then yelled at them for crossing the universe barrier between Star Wars and Garrison 7 and how that's you're not allowed to do that. He went nuts. <laughs> for his effort, I gave him a safe sci-fi poster which crosses about every universal barrier. <laughs> he was not impressed. he was livid he spent an hour following me around telling me about how bad that is it reached the point where I was like dude just fuck off or I'm going to go get one of the supernova guys and get you kicked out and he he wandered off but yeah seriously he stalked the garrison 7 guys constantly whinging at them about the just some random guy I don't know who the hell it was (laughs) Just a random dude just following around, whinging about... Oh, man. Sorry. You saying the Star Wars, Star Trek thing made me think of that. Anyway, sorry, Eugene. Go for it. <laughs> well, there's... Round 2's been reissuing a lot of the Star Trek kits, and one of the scales they like to focus on is the 1-1000 scale. And the nice part is a number of the kits they've done, they've made improvements or additions to the kits. For example, the 1-1000th original series Enterprise, they fixed the one complaint everybody had about the kit. When it was originally released on the lower part of the saucer near the neck, the copyright was actually raised on the hull. So you had to sit there and sand or scrape it off. Well, that's gone now. And the other thing they did was they added a little botany bay to the kit. Oh, nice. Hmm. Yeah, and it's in scale. The um, NX-01 Archer's Enterprise, um, that one, they added the secondary hull, which if the show would have continued longer... The Enterprise... Uh, the, the, um, from seven, Star Trek and Scott Bakula. Yeah, the, the 1701's um, extra hull expansion yeah it's right. what mounts on the bottom oh man that'd be awesome right um it's available on the one one thousand scale kit and then the a new kit they added to that line was the original series romulan bird of prey nice and that is the first time this kit has been released with the proper angles because if everybody remembers the old amt kit the angles were 90 degrees. Well, this one has <laughs> proper flaring on the, on the ship. So it's a nice little kit. Well, then they reissued the um, Enterprise B kit. And when they did that, they replaced the original lower saucer. Because they said that part was really badly detailed. Well, now they've announced they're going to be... Um, redoing the the enterprise or the excelsior kit which no longer exists 
when they did Enterprise B, apparently they took the Excelsior molds and re redid them to turn Enterprise B. So now they're making new molds so they can redo Excelsior. And this is going to be a nice kit because they're making it where you can build it as NX2000 or NCC2000 with a lot of parts that will be interchangeable. Nice. So you can build either ship. Transformers, starships in disguise. Sorry. And the other <coughs> one that's out, if you missed it, in the 1-1000 scale line is the USS Reliant. That was a new kit released earlier this year, I believe. Um, that, that one's well done and well detailed. Uh, the couple repops that have not changed, the Klingon D7 in the 1-1000 scale, they, that's been reissued several times. They did it. It's both Klingon and Romulan versions, but it's essentially the same every time it's been reissued. And the Enterprise A kit has is pretty much the same. And for those that are a little adventurous, most of these 1-1000 scale kits you can light up with a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice. Nice. Yes. So that's my report for today. And a little update for anybody. Uh, Star Trek Renegades is at $324,792. They still need about $25,000 to meet their goal. And for any modelers out there, they're selling a resin model of the Icarus. I think it says here that it's 15 inches long. And if you really want one... You can you can get one for one thousand five hundred and fifty dollars, and it's limited to twenty copies. So what you're saying is, if they all sell, they've reached their target. Oh yeah, <laughs> they've reached their target, and I think that they are pretty close to their second or third goal. Nice, nice. Yeah, that sounds pretty bloody pricey for a ship. Uh, anyway, so what is our model kits brought to us by this week? Uh, it's brought to us by Perry County Hobbies. Sweet, just making sure you plugged it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I appreciate. Uh, Can um, I do a bit on model kits, guys? Yeah, sure. And now we shift over to the 105th Armory. Okay. Um, well, really, just, you really, really should go check out the website we have. If you're in Australia and you're looking for a kit that's a little bit on the rarer side than what we can normally get over here, Yes, I'm looking at you, Hobby Co. Um, we most we're running a little short on Zoids at the moment. They kind of all sold out, but you we do have some left. Me. I didn't. I didn't do it. I, I, I did a lot of it, but I didn't do it. Um, so we're almost out of Zoids. We've still got a huge range of Macross. We've also got some St Star Wars kits left. A few other. Odds and ends, and for those of you that love Space Battleship Yamato, we have just finished placing an order for a 1 to 350 scale Yamato for sale for Gold Coast Nova. That was the big one on display, wasn't it? No, that was a 1 to 500. Oh, God. Ooh, that baby's going to be big. That, that thing's going to be huge. We've got two coming in. One is going to be built and painted and prepped for display. The other is going to be for sale. I've so you'll pictures. actually be able to see what you're buying. Not only that, but the three to f the, the three fifty has motorized turrets, and it's lighted and a few other things. It's a nice kit. Yep. I've seen pictures of it. It is, and we've managed and to get also not one a of them cheap for sale. Kit. No, it's it is not. not a cheap kit. It's not a cheap kit, but we also managed to sell a two hundred fifty dollar Pegasus at the con. So. And given the amount of people that were interested in the in trying to buy our pre-built one to five hundred, I don't think we're going to have a problem with this one. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the little reports brought to you by the one hundred fifth Armory base in Brisbane. Uh, moving right along, really quickly, we need to move on to the expanse before we run out of time. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Actually, no. I you mean, know I, what? I've watched it, but I just forgot off the road covering it. We'll, we, we'll we'll shift the expanse into the after show after Stuart does the news. Yep. Um, because Stuart's got quite a bit of news this week, he told me yes. earlier. So Yeah, there's a ton of news. And first off, I'll start with um, a Kickstarter. Yep. Uh, Black Box the Movie. Hmm. Uh, it is, it is a uh, sci-fi feature film about a survivor trapped in an escape pod trying, uh, trying to return to Earth after an accident in space. That's what it has on the um, uh, Kickstarter. The goal was £4,000. At current... It is at five thousand four hundred and seventy-five pounds, with nine days to go. Nice, very nice. So yeah, they got uh, they got um their uh, their uh, uh their budget, and then they um also have unlocked their first um extended target, which is a nice new loca- which is a a better location to film. And this uh. Second uh, extended target is uh, better effects, for, and that is at um, six thousand five hundred pounds. Nice. So yeah, just wanted to uh, start with that. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to start off with Star Wars news. However, it is not Star Wars Force Awakens news. Ooh, it is Battlefront. Oh yeah, for, I'll, I'll get back to that. I was actually going to mention. I was going to start with Rebels first. Oh, that's boring. No one cares about Rebels. I do. I love Rebels. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> yeah, Rebels has been confirmed for season three, and they're actually working on it as, um, at the moment. Nice. Very nice. So really happy for that. Yeah. So looking forward to a trailer probably coming out uh, Star Wars Celebration sometime next year because that's when they dropped the first one for season two this year. Yeah. Uh, and this is cool. Uh, Disney Infinity. <laughs> Don't ever get to report on this. They have released a gameplay trailer for Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Yes, you can play The Force Awakens in Disney Infinity. And there is an old <sighs> Han in there. I knew there'd be a, just a silent. Ugh. Anyway. Yeah. Now we're now moving on to uh, Star Wars Battlefront and the. First DLC drops this. Uh, well, for those who pre-order the game, you get it. You get it, um early. It drops on December on December first. Everyone else has to wait till December fifth. And it is the Battle of Jakku it is set twenty nine years before the events of Episode Seven. Ooh. Yeah. So, so it, it basically explains how the giant star destroyer is crashed on the planet. Yeah. And there's um there's two maps. It's basically the the Jakku is the is the um is the pl- new planet, and the, there's a small version of the map, and then there's also a um a twenty v twenty version, so a larger scale version. Wow. Yeah, that's gonna be amazing to just play and just go through and go holy crap. Oh yeah. So yeah, um, and then we move along to uh, Naruto. Naruto. Yeah, mm. uh, there is a uh, next. Uh, ge- <laughs> I don't know. If let it so go high, already, but... you morons! Yes. Anyway, just just let him do the news. Fine. <laughs> I do. I do this just to annoy Michael. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, our standard uh, Michael thing. We've got to throw one fantasy thing in every time he's on the podcast just to mess with him. Uh, I thought there was a whole podcast devoted to that. No, there was. But we still so do why it do anyway. I do this every podcast? No, no, it's just it's one piece of news. <sighs> Stop I'm doing a Chewbacca. Yeah, uh, basically there's a <laughs> countdown time before um, when Boruto starts. Boruto? When... Boruto is Naruto's Naruto kid. It's the next star. generation. Yeah. They're making In a show based words, on his kid. The guy who writes it's already run out of fucking money. So. And he na- so Naruto named his kid Boruto? Well, it, 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 the kid's name in English is Bolt, but it, in Japanese it, it uh, transfers to Boruto. Okay. So, yeah, anyway. <laughs> in other words, he's trying to fleece the unwashed idiots for as much money as he can. Pretty much. <laughs> I just love annoying Michael, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, anyway, Eugene, um, what's happening? I forgot to mention... Um, that anyone who picks up the one one thousand scale Reliant model kit 
Brad Hare Productions has a conversion kit to turn it into the battle damage version as seen towards the end of um, Search or the Wrath of Khan. Nice. With all the damage. Yep. Nice. And that's available on his website. I will provide a link when I, once I put everything up. Sounds good. Yes, anyway, yep. back to the news. Yep, i uh, got some Gotham news. Yep. It's cancelled. Uh, Woohoo! Ouch. No. <laughs> not, not, not that I'm aware of. Goth- Gotham isn't that bad and it's not cancelled. No. Uh, Goth- uh, two, two stories. Uh, first one is uh, Gotham reveals Mr. Freeze's look and looks really scarily similar to Captain Cold. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, got a uh, new casting news. Uh, Gotham are casting Marco Bowen as Matches Malone. Huh. Matches, Matches Malone is just, uh, is the guy who actually, uh, killed Bruce Wayne, uh, uh, Bruce parents. Wayne's parents. Yes. Yeah. So, getting into, getting into that side of things. Yeah. And then we move on to Doctor Who and a really interesting story and a video that popped up, uh, recently. Yeah. To tie this in, Peter Jackson confirms he will be directing a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I that's did why, hear something about that. Yeah, the, that's that why the, there was a video that popped up over the weekend with uh, Peter Jackson and his um, daughter, and he's, <laughs> he's um, cleaning all his Oscars, and then Peter Capaldi comes in. He, he's Dominic cleaning his Oscars them. in an incredibly suggestive way. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's really sus. But uh, um, apparently, this this has been um, in the planning for like the past three years. Because well, we he, know um, Peter Jackson is a massive Doctor Who fan. Yeah, he actually wanted to film an episode with Matt Smith. Don't think that's happening anymore. No. Random note. I might get to meet Peter Jackson soon, but I'm not allowed to tell anyone, so keep it a secret. What? What did you say? Exactly. I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. That came out garbled. It did. Excellent. I'll have to grill you on that one later. <laughs> and then uh, Flash and Arrow crossover is happening this week. Nice. About time we didn't get a Flash episode last week. No, they took a break from uh, Thanksgiving holiday. We didn't get Flash or Arrow. Oh, yeah, we got Supergirl. Yeah. <laughs> They took the good ones out and they gave us Supergirl. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, this is all setting up for um, Legends of Tomorrow because this is going to have Hawk Girl and a Hawk Man in it. Well, Hawk Woman and Hawk Girl. But, and is the main villain is focusing on is Vandal Savage, who is immortal. So, really looking forward to this storyline. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually waiting for Peter Jackson's um, cameo in Doctor Who, James. So I'm talking to James in the chat room. He just said, "I want to see, um, see, flying houses and crazed Jackson running around with chainsaw." War of flying houses. War of flying houses. Yeah, um, and I, my first thought was, I just want to see him cameo eating a carrot again. Because every Lord of the Rings movie, he is in a scene eating a carrot for no apparent reason. <laughs> I just found a funny, oh, funny God. little troll story. Oh God! It is to do with Force Awakens. I've been trying not to do any news, but uh, the soundtrack actually has been released. So for all the songs that are going to be in the movie, nice. And uh, comicbook.com decided to do a little uh, troll and put their and put a little funny one beforehand for the actual list. Uh, the first one is Luke Skywalker as Kylo Ren. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is funeral for a Wookiee. Please God, no! Everyone will kill. Everyone will murder everyone if that happens. Wow. Number three is Darth Vader lives. Wow. <laughs> oh, it gets better. Number four, Ray's song for her father Han Solo, which wouldn't which wouldn't surprise me to be honest. That's that's probably the most plausible one out of all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Number five, BB-8 is having a baby. With R2, probably. <laughs> and last but not least, number Because didn't six, they say BB-8 is female? Yes, BB-8 is a female droid. So... Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah, BB-8's a female S- droid. 
Since when? Since full eyes. Why does it? Why? How does it have a gender? It's a little rolling ball. <laughs> because reasons. Are you a sexist, Michael? Michael, you've been sexist again, aren't you? No. What? Yeah. Again? David, don't you dare. <laughs> don't start putting words in my mouth. Don't make me out to be something I'm not. <laughs> okay. And the last one, at least, on hey, the troll. If anyone listens to this podcast and doesn't realize that I'm messing with you, that's their own fault <laughs> for being stupid at this point, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Dave, you'll like this last one on the tr- on the troll sound- soundtrack list. Number six. The triumphant return... Of Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Back to and let me guess, it's... Warning, let me guess, the, 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 launch the, the final... Warning, the, 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 missile launch detected. the triumphant return of Jar Jar Binks. Dun, 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 dun. But yeah, no, there's, um... <laughs> the, the real track is blur, and there's, um... There's the main tile, obviously. Uh, mm. some main... A main wants to point out uh, the Falcon so obviously the Millennium Falcon Ray has her own theme so that'll be interesting to hear nice um, Kylo Ren arrives at the battle so that'll be cool Han and, Han and Leia that's another big one to point out and then I like the ending the le- end one the Jedi steps and finale I think that's I think that I think uh, seriously I think the last 10 to 15 minutes is when we're going to see Luke yeah and probably that temple building yeah so yeah Oh, and you it... mean the castle that gets blown up in the trailer? Yeah. No, no, that's the base. That's the um, that's the resistance base. Yeah. He's anyway, on, he's on a whole nother area. So. But uh, yeah, just be looking forward to that because I really want to listen to that damn soundtrack. Yeah. How? So, how much more news do you have? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, so we've got three minutes left. Any more shout-outs? I just want to say, make sure, really quickly, I just want to say, make sure you keep it on the Garrison 7 Facebook page. Something really awesome is coming. You're going to want to be part of it. I guarantee you. Bookmark it, get back there, give it a like, check it every day. Just see if there's anything here yet. Not still nothing. Still nothing? Well, it'll definitely be up later in the next couple of days. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be really, really good. So, other than that, that's that's about it until we start doing the after show in a couple of minutes. After show to talk about the expanse. We only, we never seem to do an after show when Michael's on. Yeah. Mm. You guys I just go. have to get more of anyway, here. guys. So. Yeah. What was that, Michael? Uh, you, you guys just want to have more of me when I'm here. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So anyway, we're done. It's a slightly shorter podcast by about two minutes, unless anyone else has got an announcement they want to make. Throwing it open to the floor. Yeah. (laughs) Buy more stuff from the 105th. Buy all the kits. Buy all the kits. Um, Amy says, Hawk, call me. Yes. Yes, I will. Yes. (laughs) All right, guys, I'm out. I'll catch you next time, hopefully. Hopefully I won't be so tired. Fair enough. don't count on that. (laughs) (laughs) Have fun. Snotting closes. See you guys. Bye. So, Bye. Okay. Everybody have a good day. Okay, so now he's gone. I could tell you something that I did funny on the on the page. I've been waiting for him to disappear. Now this is just between the people who are still listening and me and these guys. He was demoted from host, and it just says it's got Stuart, Eugene, and Amy as host. On the credits, and then directly below that it says Scarecrow, dot dot dot, demoted, dot dot dot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm only mentioning that after he's gone, because I'm evil. That he would kill you. Oh yeah. So, I know Amy's listening, that's the main reason I'm saying it. <laughs> so, anyway guys, that's it for this week. Um, we'll catch you next time. Uh, he was demoted because he missed, like, 10 shows in a row because of work. So it, did, it didn't feel right leaving him on credited as a co-host when he just wasn't turning up. Which isn't his fault and he's done nothing wrong or anything like that. It's just because of the, the conflict of times that sort of resulted in that. Um, just explaining to James why he was demoted. Anyway, um, check. don't forget to check out facebook.com slash save sci-fi for all of your sci-fi related crap and fun and 
God knows what else. Next week, we are starting the new Ultimate series, which will be the Ultimate Ground Force, or Ultimate... I haven't actually worked out what I'm going to call it. But it's effectively Ground Forces, so it's going to be interesting. Um, we'll get to work on that. So facebook.com slash save sci-fi, facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast, and we will catch you there. Bye. 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 Bye.